So the moderator of this panel discussion is Srimati S. Rajeshwari, head of SAID Scientific Officer H. And she completed her engineering graduation in electronics and communication engineering from Jagrajar College of Engineering, Madurai in 1986 and joined BRC Training School. She has completed MSc by research on information retrieval for scientific data. Presently, she is a head of scientific information resource division, IG Car Kalpakam. As a convener of to the authorship and publication ethics committee of IGCAR, she has designed and developed a preprint portal to ensure the ethics in authorship and publication. As a chairman of library resource recommendation committee, IGCR, she has devised methods to optimize the resource subscriptions. She has initialized documenting in corner and in collaboration with the Salim Ali Institute of Natural Arts and Ornithology. She has brought out a book on birds of DA complex Kalpaka. As a chief editor of our in-house publication, she plays a pivotal role in bringing out the annual report and newsletter of IGCI. She is president of Kalpakam Chapter of Vendors Library Association. That is proper. She is a convener yeah. of Reedy 2021. Yeah. Everybody, everyone knows that. With her efforts, SAID is the of Real Impact Award of 2020 under the category of Library Commitment to Impact from Emerald Publishing and Digitally Transformed Research Library Award from MS Wiley in 2019. I am proud to introduce the first panelist, Dr. Sandeep Kumar Pathak of ISA Boba. Dr. Sandeep Kumar Pathak is a science graduate and having a PhD in information science from University of Pune. And he is currently working as a deputy librarian in charge of Central Library, ISA Bhopal, since May 2013. Prior to joining ISA Bhopal, Pathak has worked in IIT Mandi, IIT Karakpur, and in Clubnet. He is instrumental in setting up modernized central library at ISA Propal and has supervised more than 20 projects on library automation, RFID implementation, various academic institutions. He has about 60 plus articles with him and for different journals, national and international yes, conference proceedings, and edited three conference proceedings. And he is the editor of four international journals and reviewer of three peer reviewed journals. So, really good to know. He is a recipient of SLL IHN Library Maybe Award 2014. Taylor and Francis Young Library Award 2016, and so on. I think has received aspiring Young signed Academic Library That's Award 2016, good. and he has visited Boston, USA, and uh, uh, to receive SLL Asian Library Award. He has been invited as speaker for various prestigious institutions, forums like Elsevier, Wiley, IOP, etc and a member of dozen and international professional association, including SLA, ILA, IAS, like so on. So his current research includes data mining, cytometric studies, e-resource management, automation of library application, setting up art of uh, art modern academic library systems, and also working on one nation, one subscription. Our next panelist is from Institute IOP, is a regional director of IOP, is uh, South Asia Publishing and Publishing of Arm of Institute of Physics UK, a primarily society publisher who has been working closely with the global scientific community since 1874 and supporting researchers, librarians and societies worldwide to produce academic journal books and conferences. He is an engineer by background and an MBA. He has extensive experience working in the publishing industry for more over 20 years with leading organizations like Procurus Wiley. As part of his current role with I IOP, he works closely with um, with the manage and manages the needs of librarians, faculties, and research in South Asia region, and assists in delivering impact and recognition to their research in a global arena. I'll move on to the next panelist, uh, Sri R. Ravi Chandran, Area Director, Allied Publishing Group. Can we have your videos? Yeah, you're there already. Chennai has been working in the information handling services industry since last four decades. Four decades. He is science graduate and traveled widely internationally to participate in the conferences, including. IFLA, UK, ALA, USA, ABF, Singapore, FBF, German. He has been coordinating and analyzing the government organization and the international publications in helping them to form small regional consortium for offering e-resources to the member. And uh, he has taken special marketing and sales training from the international standards publisher to propagate their products and services for corporate customers. We we'll go on to the next. Uh, Panelist Dr. T. R. Ravichandran, uh, sorry, Ravindran, who is with us now, is SOH and head of light scattering studies section of, and professor of Homi Baba National Institute. He, he has MSc physics from American College, Madurai, India, 1986, and PhD from IIT Madras, 1993. He worked in Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur, 
India and during 93-94 as a research associate and uh, worked as a visiting scientist and later faculty in Raja Ramana Institute, Bangalore. He is a scientist in Indra Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, Kalpakam since 1996. And uh, in during the year 2000-2001, he visited uh, USA with, as a visiting scientist in the chemistry department, France State University. Uh, he also during 2007 and 2008 has uh, uh, gone to uh, Washington DC, USA to the uh, ge ge Geophysical Laboratory, Carnegie Institution, Washington. His current research areas are study of phase transformation in ferroelectrics and electromagnet ele electrogetic materials using Raman spectrometry, X-ray diffraction, and computations. He has more than 100 peer-reviewed publications in both international journals and international journals, and uh, is H index in Google Scholar is 29. His awards and recognitions are like he got scientific and technical awards, excellence award by Department of Atomic Energy Government of India during 2011. He's given several invited talks in national and international conferences and universities and also uh, uh, served as a resource person for the workshop sponsored by University Grants Commission UGC and DST Department of Science and Technology. Now I hand over the stage to Srimati S. Rajeshwari. Good evening, everybody. Am I loud and clear? Yes, yes ma'am. As always. As always. <laughs> Dr. Sandeep Patak, very happy to have you here. And Mr. Prabhu Desigan from publisher IOP. Good evening. And Mr. Ravi Chandran, my long-lasting friend. Good evening. Good and of evening. course, I have next to me our Ravi Chand Ravi. Ravindran, a fellow scientist, and I believe the trends in publishing and subscription model is highly relevant topic. And most of the talks, lectures yesterday and today were on sc scholarly communications, bringing out the importance of scholarly communications and the publishing and the subscription models, which is changing day by day. What is happening in the world around? will let us discuss what is within our scope so that people can ask questions and we can discuss and get to know more. To start with, let me call upon Dr. Sandeep Patak. I believe you are going to speak on open science communication and role of you slightly made a change in this, I believe. Anything is fine, Patak. Yes. Change is yours. Thank you so much, ma'am. Before I move, uh, please confirm ma if my slide is, is Yes, visible. it is clear. Okay. So Thank good you, ma'am. I'll just try to finish in 10 minutes time. That is and, I, uh, sir. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, before I start, ma'am, I congratulate you for having this read it, which is very important and you know, need of the hour. And I thank you for making, you know, one of the panelists. And it's my honor to share the screen with a good friend of mine, uh, Sri Prabhuji, then uh, Sri R. Ravi Chandran. Uh, Dr. Sekhar, Associate Director, and... Uh, uh, he is not there. Instead, Mr. Rav Dr. Ravindran is there. Okay, Dr. Ravindran uh, and yes. uh, uh, Dr. <laughs> this, uh, Rajeshwari, ma'am, uh, uh, as my, you know, favorite, she is always full of energy. Talking oh, thank you. My favorite topic, that is a one nation, one subscription. So before I move to the open science communication, it's, I think, need to discuss what is scholarly communication. So as we know, scholarly communication is the process used by academicians to, you know, share the okay. results of their research. And these are the two models, traditional models. I think we everybody knows open access model here. Author will have the copyright, but they need to pay the uh, charges, uh, APC charges, but it is gold open access. Then again, if you see that this first model is a traditional one. Second model is the, my favorite one because I was in Ayuka and, you know, then I came to know the importance of preprint servers, you know, they are very important. So librarian should not say there is a, you know, paucity of budget and all those things because many important articles, they are, you know, available on these preprint servers. So as we know, academic publishing, you know, it's academic publishing is a subfield of publishing and, you know, all the academic work is getting published in books, journals, all those stuff. And how academic publishing works, I think we all know yeah, the process of academic publishing can be divided in three steps, production, distribution and consumption. Now coming to the open access, I think we everybody, we all the librarians are aware of this uh, Budapest, uh, you know, open access initiative in 2002 and the only constraint on production and distribution. So it was discussed that, 
you know the integrity of authors works their research work and the right to be properly acknowledged so this was discussed that author should be given the full control of their work so i think we everybody knows that you know open access in purest form is digital online free of charge accessible to everyone and now it is become a alternative to the academic publishing so now why open access matters because if you remember earlier days you know even now also most of the publisher they have a right to the articles of their journals even author cannot reuse uh, you know those uh, paper for their uh, you know uh, 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 next research they need to you know take permission from the publisher and all those things so the open access return us to the value of science which really you know has advance and improve society okay. and yeah. then your, your research with the word so under the open access you know with creative common licensing now author have the copyright of their work and they can share with anyone anywhere anytime and once it is open access they get noticed and what is the advantage of notice they are likely to get more citation for their research work and if their uh, research is visible to everybody they are likely to attract more collaborator in their area that is what you know uh, even i see the beneficial in my case so i think this is also one of the advantage with open access model and then inform the future so student fund, uh, funders policy makers and readers they all are the stakeholders in this science these are the various models gold open access green open access hybrid open access bronze platinum so i'm not going to discuss in detail uh, so now coming to the open science so open science is a movement is a movement to make scientific research accessible to everyone especially those who are science aspirant because you know we are working in the institute of basic science in icers all the icers like on the uh, line of the irc bangalore so open science is transparent and accessible knowledge which can be shared with everyone and diversity and inclusion as we know it leads to the better science so uh, uh, we should also acknowledge the publishers like prabhu is here from iop allied representative because you know they are playing also very important role if you see all the major academic publisher 5 to 15% of their publication they are in open access model so what is the role of our librarian this open science we need to communicate to whom communicate to our academic community and also the those who are the science as friend so i'll quote one uh, there's a one say on the open science by alice nerald he is a plos uh, one author he says i think open science has huge okay. benefits the more people you reach the better science should be the transparent and accessible as possible because it should be reproducible and confirmed by others that is what gives science its power so these are the various factors of you know in the science base. open data open source software open publications so i'm not going in detail because i'll be sharing my slides with uh, rajeshwari ma'am so why to plos because i admire this publisher you know they all the journals are in open access model so why not you know this uh, can be taken as a model by all other publishers i think uh, prabhu is from iop uh, we discuss also this because it is not possible to survive without library subscription so i really you know quote this plos because you know there all this is open access plan as compliant and all those things so i think that can be discussed upon then open science communication how many of our librarians we know that you know the uh, very you know highly prestigious journals like indian academy of science how many librarians we have put on our library website it is our duty to communicate such science to our users and need to tell in our orientation program you see the current science it is even i'll say better than the current science international current science then there is a you know pramana resonance they are all are the classic you know journals with the high impact factors so we should take a lesson and we should learn from this then iop again i will say they are also you know playing important role i am just took one example of iop there are many other publishers like wiley elsewhere and then you know rsc acs they all have open access but they are also playing important role iop for you know open science self press uh, self press also i'd like to tell you know the especially the fellow librarians you know because uh, if you subscribe self press content then you need to pay around in 19000 dollars but you know you must be knowing that embargo period just 12 months so if you can afford for one year then all their content become open access so i'm just giving one example so being a librarian we should know the publishers various open it is embargo policy and then you, we should act on this now coming to the doaj as we know all are highly peer reviewed journal if you see the total it is a 17000 journals and 12000 journals are without apc so it not necessary you know you uh, you need to pay apc you can also publish without paying apc but 
I'll say add one line here. Uh, I think Rajeshwari man can also comment on later part of this. That you know, if, if you want to pay APC, librarians can play a very you know important role. Like in our case, uh, you know, faculty member they reach if they approach to the library, and we you know uh, try to help faculty members to get their APC waived out. Especially society publishers, uh, they are you know very kind enough to listen to you know the librarians' voice. Uh, then uh, web of science, you see one data I'd like to share. I said, Bhopal, we have a 2300 publication. It may show you less because, you know, it is just a 12 year old baby. Uh, this our uh, I said, Bhopal. Can we interrupt uh, so, and ask uh, questions? This child actually is 12 year old. So if you see 2300 out of 2300, <coughs> four publications are open access. Some more but only. So you can write down I wrote down something. But, uh, it's going. Yeah. So uh, in case of ISR Bhopal, what we did, uh, we you know have a though we have a regular institution repository, but we have a also repository for the embargo free publications. So anybody has any query in this regard, I'll be happy to discuss. Then this is our duty to share open access resources. There was a, this recent study about open access figures. How you know this publishing is going on board open access, hybrid open access. There is various things on this preprint servers. I am a big fan of preprint, whether it is RCAM. Cam archives, agri archives, or archive.org. There is a guide also. I've given a link over here. Predatory publishing, you know, being a librarian, we should tell our user community, you know, what is the, especially the new, uh, you know, uh, young buddy scholars, they should not be trapped of anything. There are best practices. We should tell, you know, our, so this helps us to the, communicate how we can communicate with open science, how to make a best use of available resources. So like think, check, submit, there are many things available we can play in this. Then how you can sensitize researchers on uh, predatory. So we need to tell about, you know, UGC coverage, web of science, scopus. Somebody asked me, you know, why my H index is different in Google Scholar and, uh, you know, the scopus and web of science. So we should know being able how, you know, we should uh, reply to that because, you know, the indexing number of general index by them, are, they are different. And of course, uh, I consider Twitter, you know, as a more academic platform. So if you say open science, we'll give various open science projects. You can follow them. If you want to follow any particular uh, academic journal or academic, you know, even a learned uh, personality, if they're on Twitter, you can follow. You every day get to know what new, you know, you are, they are doing. So this is also very useful. Publisher like Elsewhere is also doing a great, you know, contribution like their, you know, digital commons and open access, chorus, all those part of this. So coming to the last slide of my presentation, uh, that, you know, the librarians uh, and libraries, academic libraries have a very, very important roles. And uh, I think during pandemic, when, you know, everything was closed, but, you know, research never stops. Research was on and librarians were also on. Though the physical space was off, but libraries were open 24 by 7 by their digital resources and the peer reviewed scientific discoveries we made, you know, that available. So that also we need to make sure that how this, you know, research is made available to our uh, academic community and how we can, you know, uh, inform our users updating our uh, like uh, uh, library website, whatever research tools are available. That also, you know, we need to because we know faculty members are very busy. They're busy in teaching, research, administrative responsibility. So we need to save the time of the research scholar, you know, so they can produce the quality research. So with these words, once again, I thank, uh, sincerely thank Rajeshwari ma'am for mm -hmm. giving me this opportunity, thank this you. platform, yeah, to share awesome. my views on this. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Pathak, in uh, five minutes, you included so much information. It's overwhelming, you know? This is called big data, is it? <laughs> Thank you. So what is that you didn't say? I am just wondering. You started in open access, open science communication, and you spoke about everything on a preprint service and your repositories. And okay, I do not know. First, I'll ask uh, Ravindra. So, you you to go that you may stop me some point that you know time is over. So I thought let me finish. And nothing, 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 nothing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Patak, I have a question. Yes, sir. I think, uh, Prabhu, I think, uh, hello, uh, sir, can you repeat? I think there is some audio issue. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, sir, we, I can oh, hear. Audio you. issue. I'm uh, loudly speaking. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, my question is, uh, does ISER pay publication charges for open access publishing? 
No, Do sir. you have provision? Even, no. Even uh, faculty members are but not you... allowed to pay the APC uh, from their CPD. Uh -huh. Oh. Uh -huh. Then, uh, then uh, I mean, uh, what is the point in... I mean, uh, that, that is where... Uh, uh, he, what he meant was, he will do the negotiation with the okay, publishers to, to reduce okay, the price. To publishers. So what okay, I did, but, sir... Uh, uh, they are saying for India, maybe 50%. So what I, what I mentioned... Yeah, many of my, the publishers uh, are saying... What I mentioned in my presentation, that since they are... Not, huh, please. You know, uh, we know that nowadays there is a trend faculty member wish to publish in the open access, you know, journals. And in case of APC, uh, you know, they... Uh, send a request to the library to get his APC wave off. And what I said, in case of society publishers, we have a very high ratio, success ratio, 60 to 80 percent. But in case of commercial persons, yeah, I, 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 I heard that, I heard that. Yeah, but uh, there are a few institutions I heard like IPR, Institute of Plasma Research, Gandhi Nagar, you know, they have uh, some budget, maybe 5 percent of the budget they uh, reserved for APC charges. I think RRI or IA Bangalore also, they have some so I think, you know, they have started working on this thing and I think here also there is a lot of discussion uh, that, you know, uh, we, uh, now institute has to think about paying the APC on behalf of the authors. Right, right. Yes. There are many funders actually, the DST and others, they are now working towards how to pay and how much we should pay and it depends on how to study that uh, that work is good enough to pay. That is a very fluid area and it is not so simple, number one. Number two, our institutions feel we have some update elements and other things and we should not be given APCs, help in that area. Because update elements is for learning and improving our status. Teacher as for us, education or whatever is concerned. So the APC has to be out of that. But this apart, there is one more problem. Like if you want to uh, publish in an OA and that too in a hybrid one or in a, um, a subscribed journal or a journal that is of high reputation, the APC is also high. It is not less. That is what I was about to say. The society and other things, publishers, academic publishers, then their APCs are a bit nominal. But when it comes to open access, also there is one more thing. You are not clear whether your research is reaching the right audience. Though yes, it is open to all, but is it already established? Because our uh, senior scientists, they have a set of publishers where they like to publish and it reaches the audience correctly, the targeted audience. So the open access, a subscribed journal, when it becomes open access, when suddenly they become and we get to know and all those issues, why even in subscription I have problem. Suddenly they make a journal open access, not that they uh, return the money, that okay, we'll not go to that. We will concentrate on what we are talking. So these issues do stay and I find it a bit uh, difficult to convince my scientist or the scientist here in my office, yes, open access is good. But of course the open science forums and the 2021 January day. Um, committees I have noticed what is the uh, Indian scenario as far as open science compu I mean, uh, communication is concerned? For instance, initially the draft, it looked like we agreed. Our government liked it. But uh, now with open one nation, one subscription, I don't see the point of this open science communication also being adhered to by the government. Our government speaks about green OA, not the gold OA like the open science communication is proposing. So I have my own uh, um, idea. I mean, uh, I do not know exactly what exactly is the Indian government's view on open science communication. 
Yeah, he wants to say something. Anybody wants to say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is Dr. Satish Monoli speaking from Actrack Khargar. Yeah. I have a submission with the due permission of the moderator. Uh, yeah, please. In the morning also, the, there was a kind of a publisher was mentioning about the transform, transformative agreement wherein the uh, libraries, what, whoever, whatever the journals they are subscribing, if you have an agreement of the subscription with the condition that whatever the publications or articles are published in your journal, you are not going to charge the APC. If you are putting a kind of a condition or you are signing such an agreement that is called a transformative agreements, then anyone can just publish n number of articles in the journals which are subscribed by that particular real oh. Yeah, this is good. Good. I don't know whether uh, we have such an agreement. Do we have such agreement with the publishers? No, no. we have to initiate being a librarians. We have uh. to initiate and we have to insist the publishers to sign such kind of agreements. Otherwise, they will not. Otherwise, simply they are just getting the revenue. Why they will sign on such kind of agreement? But this is a kind mm. of initiative already which has been initiated in the Western uh, countries. We have oh. to emphasize on such kind of uh, uh, agreements while just signing the documents. Yeah, Actually, so Dr. Manali. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Satish, uh, what he says, uh, he is uh, rightly said. Uh, recently, the DBT has DBT consortium has successfully negotiated with few publishers on the same line, and now I think uh, this is the all the consortium coordinator need to take a lead when they negotiate at top. They need to make sure there is a you know some APC wave off or some gold open access articles kind of things and like and we also need to you know make sure like uh, uh, being a librarian we also need to tell uh, you know our academic community for example IOP exactly. they will start up a 50 percent discount on you know APC so those rather things than, rather than going for the discount if we insist on such kind of a conditions wherein the libraries are spending close together for a one only against one publisher. No, no, actually, Dr. Satish, it is not actually has become practical in India and it has not happened yet, baby. And you should understand the publishers take a different stand as far as India is concerned and other nations are concerned. And um, before we keep and uh, you told me about the uh, Department of Biotechnology, they generally are a bit different from the other science and technology in that they always uh, publish in a set of journals that is a smaller um, set and for that all the time they will publish there if you take a department of atomic energy like igcr or something we are multiple i mean we go to so many journals we cannot do that same sort of uh, negotiation that way so now we will complete one turn from everybody before we go to further discussions. Uh, shall we take up uh, Mr. Prabhudesigan for his views on subscription models? As so you are not audible yet. No, you are not uh, audible. His, his topic is evolving ebook purchase models. Oh, okay. Sir, you are not audible. Not audible. Prabhu, you are not audible. Prabhu, I am not able to hear you. Hmm. He has to switch on his mic. You can unmute, maybe? Yeah, I think something is. Can you he has to. I may have to I call up. Control mechanism must be added. Sir, Madam, Sir, I am uh, putting on the chat to him privately, like you are not audible. First of all, he should see that chat, no. Or right. we may call the ma'am next uh, panelist and meantime, I think he can settle down. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, he is speaking, uh, Sandeep. Thank you, he is talking. No, he is not there. Not there. He is not there. He says, come back. Come back also. He has come back. Mm. He can make some action also. Cannot. Can yeah, yeah. We can say. We can say it's not. Cannot say. Oh. Come back. Again gone? Yeah, yes, 
we'll give him one or two minutes because when a person is trying online is a bit tricky yeah yeah for easy so meantime i'd like to share one update ma'am till prabhu ji join <laughs> so all in case of icers all directors going to meet and what they are trying to do is like for one particular publisher one database ah. one icer will pay and all the icers will have access so let's see okay. how this model goes i think this is also a different kind of you know uh, cross cross uh, sharing basically that model so uh, okay yeah. that sounds very interesting we will wait and see and we'll try to move it here also now loud yeah oh my bad sorry i don't know what yeah, happened i think it just froze problem. or maybe such things happen and oh, like maybe Or maybe the or maybe the transformative agreement was too too hard for me. So, <laughs> uh, good evening, yes. everybody, and uh, uh, it's 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 pretty impressive, I should say, after two days uh, of doing something which is hybrid, which I have not seen any conference. You know, where some of you are online, some of you are offline, and you know, you, I think. Very glitch, isn't it, Prabhu? Absolutely, uh, that's what I was about to say. I mean, yeah, I'm, thank you. I'm more than impressed, uh, and of course, and the more impressive is the fact you still have all the energy to, to, to kind of push us and you know uh, take our input. <laughs> so, <laughs> so again, uh, thank that you gives everyone. Gives me uh, energy. The topic has given me more energy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And 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 just on a on a on a, on a side note, I don't know whether yeah. the fact that, that the fact that you put us all in the last session because maybe you are trying to save the best for the last. I don't know, but. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> thinking <laughs> considering it is to be that um, so what uh, quickly because i think in the, in the interest of time uh, and uh, before i like i said i'm very glad that i got i'm i'm in, uh, in i'm very comfortable in this group because ravi ji to i know for a long time patak sir of course is a good friend of mine so and uh, uh, ravindran sir good to see you although i've not seen you in person so what um, i want to take you quickly through um, is something about ebooks because i know uh, as probably most of you know the, the big change that happened during the pandemic is the big drive for digital resources and ebooks came up as top at least in our side of things as uh, the demand especially from turnaways where a lot of people especially students and researchers were trying to access so i'm just trying to uh, hopefully share and hopefully you'll be able to see um, my screen please let me know um, if you're able to Uh, are you able to see my uh, screen uh, yes 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 you can make it a full screen yeah full yes, screen is it uh, is it come full screen no no not it ah, ah, no yes yes, yes. you are full okay. screen now excellent thank you so uh, just a quick introduction most of you know me but ravindran sir my name is prabhu tesekar no i'm actually the regional director of iop uh, there are, i'm assuming there are still people who are uh, watching this uh, remotely uh, so i'm actually responsible for the iop which is institute of publishing uh, activities in south asia uh, so just one or two quick slides about what we are especially for people who may not be very comfortable familiar with what we are uh, we are the publishing arm of the institute of physics which is a society uh, promoting physics since 1870s uh, based out of uk we are headquartered in uk and like i said i manage the indian operation uh, our content uh, in terms of what we call dissemination and distribution happens in different formats uh, high quality journals which IG car and most of the DA institutions use for a long time conference series ebooks and of course we also have award winning journalism through our uh, physics world magazine which i think a lot of libraries continue to be using for a long time uh, so uh, our book program is kind of a little different from a lot of other publishers you worked with uh, primarily because it's a very new program uh, which is started only around in 2014 2015 timeline uh, so the good news is uh, you know it, it's highly you know advanced in terms of technology the bad news is we started with zero content so 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 the good thing was it's any of these things happen so we had a kind of combination where we could build a, a product or a service which is born digital which is a lot of publishers historically as you know had a, a physical book and they digitized it and then created a program but in our case we could adapt technologies uh, like for example epub3 and all these technologies right from the word go okay and and the focus was on of course on uh, high quality physics books and uh, interestingly i can say this confidently also that we are considered and still the uh, major society as far as publishing physics among the physics society publishers the ips and the aps and all that 
Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, we make sure we incorporate all the latest technologies, whether it was EPUB, whether it is MathJax, you know, all those things that typically any uh, anybody interested in. So, in, in, because we could incorporate something like EPUB three, we could even incorporate things like multimedia uh, videos, interactive figures, etc., in our uh, ebook content. Um, quickly move on. Uh, so. Broadly, we have three, our, our books address three, three quick areas. Uh, one is on a graduate textbook program, which is kind of pretty, pretty interesting, uh, on quantum theory on various areas, which is very popular. Uh, we have other division, which is on the professional development. So this is basically like science communication, like what we're talking about, uh, bias in science and communication, very popular book that we released globally, very popular. Uh, and also uh, research monographs, more from uh, what, you, what your masters and PhDs and other research scholars use. So these are the three uh, areas where all our uh, content of ebooks fall under. Okay. Uh, standard, but I think it's just quickly I'll run through. Uh, uh, we kind of wanted to adopt this model very similar to how a library would purchase a physical book, right? Where you wanted all control in terms of how it is we use internally in the library based on your policies, how it has to be accessible all the time. This perpetual access, meaning you buy it, you own it, like a physical book that you have in the library, right? And importantly, it also supports all the key formats, including Kindle, which I think a lot of publishers still don't do. Uh, and again, uh, we made sure, as most of the publishers do, it's in, it is also integrated into our uh, journal platform. So there's no differentiation in whether you're accessing a journal uh, article or uh, a chapter of a book. Uh, so traditional ebook models, I'm sure you've all been buying ebooks for a long time, but I just quickly touch on it uh, before I get into the one which I'm going to talk about. Yeah, uh, uh, Historically, uh, uh, you, uh, libraries bought collections, which is kind of pretty easy. Right? You buy the entire collection by, by a publisher. Uh, yes, if it's not affordable, yes, then you move on into title by title purchase, where you, you pick what you want. Uh, Sometimes the publishers also broke down their content into subject base, so you can buy subjects based on your requirement, whether it's social science, whether it's humanities, whether it is, um, you know, math or whether it is physics, whatever areas you want. And of course, uh, something that's also becoming uh, quite popular with is the front list purchase. So where you kind of pre-order the content that is going to be published the following year, you get a discount, and and uh, you know uh, the library then keep getting content on a regular basis. So these are traditionally, I mean, probably there are more, but these are popular traditional ebook models that pretty much everybody is familiar with, right? Uh, so what I quickly wanted to uh, bring in, uh, which is kind of, I think, uh, uh, kind of a balance is, I would say, uh, in what's happening in the, in the library world is what is called an evidence-based acquisition model, right? Uh, so what, what is basically to, I mean, as, as, the, as the name says, uh, as we call EBA. So what does it do? So in, in the evidence-based acquisition model, the institution or the library pays one-time fee to get access to the complete collection of our books, right? Now, the library users um, will get unlimited access to the complete collection for a period of one year, right? And at the end of one year, you will determine, you as library or your faculty, whoever you do as part of your collection development process, determine which books to purchase. Okay, based on what we call real usage data. And the fee that you've done paid for accessing this content can be used as a purchase price, meaning if ultimately you buy with the money you paid and add to your collection, whatever the users are looking for. Okay, just to build on it, again, how do you choose a library? Like I said, you get access to choose the books end of 12 month period. This is equivalent to the value of what you have paid as an upfront fee. And selection, as I said, based on your criteria, whatever your institution's policy is. Okay, a quick run through, very obvious, but I think important. One is the, you, the entire collection of books to your users is available for an affordable price, okay? The fee that you pay is just a fraction of the total collection price, meaning, for example, if you have X number of titles, if the price is Y, you'll be paying only a fraction of Y to get access to the complete collection of things, right? Uh, it also takes the guesswork out of ebook selection, meaning typically as part of your process, either the faculty or your researcher, scholar, or audio student looks at the title, looks at, gets a brief description and sends you the information. But here you get access to the complete collection for the entire year before you figure out whether the title is important or not important, right? 
And again, importantly, which is always great for any, any purchasing process, is the decision making power is in the hands of the buyer, which is in your case is you or your institutional group. Uh, and also another important thing, which is uh, any librarian here would, would concur, is the fact you are allowed you to budget for a predetermined price, meaning there is a fixed price. It's not like flexible. It's a fixed price you pay, and then you get access to the entire content. So even from budgeting point of view, you know how much you're going to pay for this. So I don't want to take more time. Can I can I uh, say something that comes on? I uh, mean, first thing on my mind, Prabhu, about this uh, evidence-based accusation. Instead of uh, you telling us, I mean, um, spreading this to the librarians, I believe you should first speak to our finance department. You know, okay. because if you say for a amount I get so much, but only for a year. But later on, it is only one fixed amount. I don't know whether they will accept it in, uh, in I mean, like I have to say, this is the book I bought and okay. I go on. That was the print copy period. When okay. it comes to um, this uh, ebooks, I have to convince them why the package I'm buying with so much difficulty. Because at the end of the day, you are telling for that money we paid, we have to adjust based on our users. So we do not even know how many are going to come at the end of the year. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Don't okay. take it as a criticizing for uh, No, no, no. It's fine. It's a fair point. Because, it's a fair uh, point. No, no, it's a fair I point. Think the assumption is that uh, the number of users, number of books required will be more than what you pay upfront. Uh, Absolutely. Not like that. So, okay. Um, yeah, so that uh, yeah. you will be required to pay uh, either whatever you paid upfront or more than that. After you pay only, you are going to get the total loss. That is what I am saying, upfront. Uh, yeah. upfront. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in advance, you pay an amount, and at the end of the year, uh, depending on how many books uh, people have accessed and uh, shown interest, you may have to, I mean, you may want to buy. Dr. Mm -hmm. Manali and Patak, are you listening to what he said? Okay. Then, okay. actually, ebook models generally what happens, I believe, is so many society uh, ebooks they uh, contact us, ask us, or rather, they nowadays, because of the geographical uh, positions and the different digital um, uh, tools, they understand the research area of a university or an institute and they come to us with the right set of books we may need. With can, some additional things to that package. Can I? Can I? Ask, can I? Sure, madam. Madam, so just to interested and make a package based on our feedback and ask us okay. to buy. Okay. Okay. Can I just clarify? Just clarify this. I think it's a good point, and I just want to make sure that. And one more thing is uh, nowadays sure. the concept of clear the shelf by one of the publishers. The concept was good. Already the books bought by us. It's okay. for a very very uh, less price. He will make it e-books digital. Oh, okay. Okay. So, madam, just to clarify, you like you said, see, you you mentioned that you will have a set number of books that you want. See, the idea of this whole thing is, the the big challenge for majority libraries is to access the bigger content that is out there. Right. So, you're paying yes. a small fraction. The, on that fraction of money that you're paying, you can still buy the content that you want. Like you said, for example, let's say I want to give you 100 books for a certain price, right? I'm saying at the end of the year, you can still buy that 100 books for the same price, but for the one year, your users get access to the full content so that 100 books that you mentioned that you want, you can move around that 100 number based on the requirement of your users or yourself. You know what I mean? It could be based on any way you want. So the idea is you're getting more access to the content for one full year. It's like a test drive, right? And your money is not wasted. Your money is still there. End of the year, you can still buy that same 100 books that you wanted to buy at the start of the year. So that is what the plus point is. So it is like, it's not that you're missing anything out no, of this whole there process. There are a lot of plus points. I'm only looking with respect sure, to sure. The finance and other things. I and understand it. It's a good point. Thank you. You no, may no, have I, to I, come I, back to me with uh, how many people has taken that model. Yeah, Fair enough. definitely. It's very new, but yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll come back to it. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. It is Thank a you. very good model anyway. And it's very interesting also. Such a good idea. But uh, how much uh, we'll be able to help? Yes, Monoli. Yes, sir. Uh, in connection to this uh, uh, model, what uh, our colleague had just mentioned, yes. I just uh, I need to really know and understand the kind of uh, books 
which are being offered in such kind of a packages or offers because in one of the offers what i have seen uh, they came out with a pack, pack of say around 500 titles and uh, the relevant titles in that entire books of 500 i could hardly see 10 or 15. no actually this is really IOP, all... it is so physics physics only okay so, right it's mechanical science. Science. otherwise it's material science yeah yeah, yeah, see, yeah, I yeah. Think... material science and everything related sure. Sure. I totally agree. then it is fine otherwise one of the offers what i just seen in the entire after going through the in details only 10 15 uh, times we'll we'll first the finish the uh okay manali we'll yes. first yes. finish the other uh, thank speakers thank also you. thank you yeah thank ravi chandran thank you yes mr ravi chandran yes, yes ma'am Yes, uh, you're uh, panelists. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes slightly, yes. slightly, uh, slightly lower uh, volume. You can increase the volume. Okay, ma'am. So, distinguished panelists, uh, good evening uh, to all of you once again. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Uh, Rajeshwari, madam, uh, for having me on board in the panel discussion. I'm really honored. The old day yesterday, I was there in IG Corp. Uh, wonderful, madam. Uh, it was a great team effort, and uh, I want to really congratulate you because I have seen you, uh, your team physically in action. Prabhu, you were not there yesterday. I was there. Fantastic. Hats off to madam. My apologies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah actually, it's one of one of you. First time I am uh, seeing this kind of uh, conference. Somebody is there online. Physically I know. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, by the way, madam, Your voice is questions. breaking a bit. Yeah, probably you can keep the mic near near your mouth. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, is it all right now? Ah, it's much better. But okay, you okay, out of focus. Okay. Yeah. Sir. Now. So, so, uh, I I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I have a written script. Uh, that is best. Uh, read it out. Uh, yeah, I will read it out. This is uh, basically, madam has given me a topic role of. Uh, Subscription vendors uh, in the okay. electronic era. Uh, so right. let me start uh, my uh, this thing uh, script. You may have to adjust your camera a bit so that your face is visible. Uh, or now, can, uh, ah yes, now it is fine. good. Fine. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. So the development of the internet, electronic journals, and the questions surrounding the longevity of the paper journals have led some to wonder what the role of subscription vendors will be in the future. Regardless of future changes in the variety of information and available media, the subscription agency's main role in helping customers efficiently identify, procure and manage a variety of information resources will be the same, although the methods of conducting business and offering additional services will change. Even if information becomes more fragmented, the access to articles through websites, online posts, and other means will still be available on subscription for academic, research, public, and corporate libraries. Providing end users with coordinated, cost-effective access to quality information, including serials, books, articles, monographs, and databases, will continue to be a challenge for libraries and organizations. Therefore, the vendor services for information location, order and payment consolidation, access provision, and resource management will be needed more than ever. Therefore, the subscription vendor provide one-stop shopping for content from around the world besides providing advice on the publisher's licensing and access model, etc. Most agents maintain databases of titles, title changes, ISSNs, prices, issues per annum, and everything a subscriber be by a subscription. Just as libraries and publishers are trying to cope with their dual publishing environment, so are the subscription vendors trying to accommodate both the print and the electronic journals and books. The goal is to provide products and services that integrate the electronic and printed information. The benefits realized by the publishers when working with subscription vendors are similar to those seen by libraries. There is significant payment consolidation 
on the publisher's end when working with the agents as opposed to libraries directly. Being an established establishment based out of native country, Sir, cut your video and speak. I to subscribe in every way, including fulfillment of tax compliance enforced by state and central governments from time to time, such as goods and service tax, etc., as per the law. Subscription vendors help the libraries to reduce subscription in good time, thereby avoiding breaks in supply of serials and deactivation of online access, etc. In the print subscription scenario, subscription vendor respond effectively to claims of missing issues and other queries. Subscription vendor shall also provide clear detailed invoices observing the customer's specific audit requirements, including integrity bond, banker certificate, price proof, payment remittance proof, etc. Vendors shall also provide information on new products and services published by the publishers from time to time to the end users, including research scholars, scientists, faculty members, practicing doctors, PG students, etc., to keep them abreast of the latest developments in their field of research, thereby not only helping the user community, but also content providers. Last but not the least, on the social responsibility front, subscription vendor generates employment for citizens, pay income tax on the profit they make, save precious foreign exchange. Thank you very much for the opportunity. your role in fact you are the most reliable person i uh, uh, contact for any advice in this area and i know patak agrees with me yes patak and uh, i'm not going to allow any questions or i'm not going to give the feedback immediately because two more people are there to give our <laughs> views so first we will speak yes so first i'll ask um, uh, call upon uh, Dr. Ravindran to give his views and then I'll also speak. Then we will continue our discussion with yeah. the permission of others in the panel. Yeah. So actually, as you might have seen in the program, uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar was to speak, participate in this panel discussion. And the topic he had given was scientific publishing Indian context. I think it's a good uh, topic. And uh, since uh, I also have been concerned with publishing for so many years, probably I can speak a few things on this. Uh, scientific publishing, of course, has come a long way uh, from the early days of uh, my research career. In fact, it started more than 30 years ago when we used to print our paper and the manuscript and uh, send it by air mail to the uh, publisher's office. Uh, uh, sometimes abroad and uh, and uh, that was called snail mail, you know, air mail. So my first research paper from IGCAR was again from a journal high pressure research, which took uh, all of one year from the time of uh, <laughs> posting it to seeing it in uh, print. And of course, later came submission by uh, email. And uh, nowadays, of course, uh, web submission is the norm. Uh, coming to open access uh, publishing, we have, of course, uh, discussed a lot on this. Uh, this requires article publication charges to be paid by the authors. For a country like India, it will be difficult or sometimes questionable uh, to allot money towards uh, this. So that is anyway. So it's a good thing uh, as uh, uh, has been mentioned, visibility increases, and uh, so you may get uh, better uh, citations for your work and uh, collaborations. All those plus points are there to open access uh, publishing. But still, we have to see whether uh, we can afford or whether it is uh, right on our part to, of course, we spend a lot of money for uh, especially like uh, uh, DAE and uh, other uh, such organizations, national laboratories. We spend a uh, lot of money for uh, towards research. but. Uh, that way, it's a small fraction it will be to uh, for this open access uh, charges, public APC. Uh, but still, 
there are no provisions at least uh, in our office in DAE uh, as far as I know there is no provision for APC and uh, as has been uh, suggested uh, one can negotiate with uh, the uh, publishers to waive the charges or one can uh, insist on uh, uh, signing uh, that agreement while uh, subscribing itself uh, to uh, not ask for uh, uh, APC for uh, uh, members of the library users so that is also there one thing they may be agree for such things to academics not to research institutes not to research <laughs> especially when they know that it's a national lab mm. they may try to extract they know our r d budget so they will not agree yeah so but uh, still we can mm. ask and uh, collective bargaining should be there of course all of the brc rr cat and uh, all IG car together. Actually, I'm sitting in all the consortia and other um, bargaining <laughs> meetings, so it's a bit difficult. A bit no, difficult. Anyway. Okay, okay. Can and uh, one thing is, uh, uh, there is no doubt that uh, our scientists should be en encouraged to publish in Indian oh. journals. Hmm? So, of course, uh, IOP is there. 50% can be published in uh, foreign journals. 50% in Indian journals. If such a, um, if, if it is made mandatory for uh, scientists by the management, then I think uh, then only Indian journals can come up. Otherwise, as uh, it was pointed out by someone uh, today, Mohan, today or yesterday, today only. today only, 1932 onwards, such talks have been there that uh, uh, people should uh, publish, Indian scientists should uh, publish in Indian journals, but it has not happened. Because uh, there is no such uh, compulsion by the management and also, of course, uh, during evaluation, uh, people are looking at uh, high impact factor journals and which are uh, most of the time uh, from uh, abroad. So people tend to, even our uh, biggest scientists, they send to uh, foreign journals, high impact journals and get them published and that's how they get visibility also. But <clears throat> that is all fine. But if it is made mandatory that 50%, you send one paper to a foreign journal, next paper should be to an Indian journal, society journal, Indian Academy of Sciences journal or any such uh, Indian journal. Even uh, private Indian uh, good uh, scientific societies can start journals and so it has to be in Indian journals. If uh, such a uh, rule is made by the management, then only uh, this can be achieved and uh, I feel that kind of recommendation can be made no, by but, you. Uh, some such a recommendation is already there by the Science, Technology and Innovative Plan Draft 5 of uh, Government of India. They want to promote the Indian journals. Hmm. So, I mean, uh, they have indicated all that and work is going on in the background, but it cannot happen overnight. It has to be done in steps and it will happen, I believe. But it cannot take another 50 years. No, no, not 50 years. It has taken 90, 90 very, very years fast. already. No, no, no. <laughs> Since the talk uh, started or even before people might have, of course. Uh, so this should come from chairman level at DAE. No, no, government of India. Yeah, MHRD, PM, PM level. Principal advisor to PM, Dr. Uh, K. Vijayaraghavan is uh, behind all this. Yeah. In addition to the set of advisors and uh, the draft by whoever has made it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's all I wanted to say. So anyway, we can discuss uh, these things and other things. Yeah. Yeah, and actually I am getting indication from the... <laughs> <laughs> um, other committee members, I am taking more time, but so we'll not complete yet. We'll take our own time, but still, uh, let me finish my part also. Actually, I've had called upon uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar from SIRD BRC to deliver this uh, small piece of talk on One Nation, One Subscription, since he attended the meeting conducted by um, Honorable Principal Advisor to PM Dr. K. Vijay Raghavan in August 2021. Since uh, he had to catch a flight and there is some time mismatch, so I'm doing it myself, so bear with me. If there are some mistakes here and there, but this is already a published uh, fact and it is known the talks are going on from 2020 onwards, so nothing uh, 
can go wrong, I believe. Suddenly I've taken up the topic, so uh, let me go first. Science Technology Innovation Plan, draft five of Government of India that was released in 2020, spoke up about very uh, innovative and important policies to promote scientific research in India. The foremost of that is One Nation, One Subscription. We all know about the subscription difficulties. Only the premier institute and higher education institutes have access to all the general necessary journal scientific research, but the others are not able to get it. Indian government is trying to achieve universal access to scholarly and research articles to every citizen of India. This is very, very ambitious process and uh, people have started working on it. They're conducting meetings with representatives from every department, every academic research institutes, and there is an advisory body. They're discussing and now they've come out with a figure 1,500 crores to subscribe all the journals. They've arrived at this figure by counting the uh, money spent by the different higher education institutes and research institutes of government of India, what they are spending. They have not counted the uh, private sector yet. Maybe if that is also counted, the figure will be correct, very more precise. But what they think is when you are negotiating, um, as a nation, they may get some concessions and this may happen a reality at the near future because step by step, they're thinking of what all may be necessary, how to go ahead, how to uh, get the um, science and research to the common man person by person. Is it through public libraries? Is it going to be through academic libraries, whatever they are thinking and thinking of centralized repository, where the knowledge assets of each institute will be harvested and placed, certain um, on uh, experimental basis, the DST, DBT, and CSIR labs, they have set up open green access repositories, but still, some more push and encouragement is necessary because it is not so simple for a copyrighted embargo, a person who has signed the copyright to put his deposit, his postprint onto a green access, just like that voluntarily. He wants more, um, the government has to tell him, yes, I will speak to the publisher and then get back to you. That sort of situation has to arrive now people are finding out the advisory board is getting in the ideas, what are all there for them to do. When this open science forum is a communication forum is talking about only gold access and it is not advising, it is not supporting gold access, I mean uh, green access. We are going for green OE and one nation, one subscription. So what is the Indian government's policy towards open science communication has to be brought out clearly so that we can speak in our department and make the people understand what exactly we ought to do. Go for open access or not go for open access. And you know, one more problem is there. If every nation, this one nation, one subscription is not new to the world. Already Uruguay, Egypt, Germany are following that. But supposing we do that, we speak to many subscription, uh, subscription, I um, mean, uh, journalists, publishers, and say we want this. They may say, I'm open access. And they may increase the APC. That possibility is there, we do not know. Then the funders, what is their idea? Maybe I was thinking, maybe I should have included a funder in our panel to give a better view. But uh, who is the funder? 
is dst or clri i mean uh, csir or so then i thought the funders all belong to western countries or european countries and okay we do have our own funders but uh, their policies are not uniform yet how much to pay as APC or uh, how much to do as it. So there are a lot of gray areas and libraries are used to gray areas. We are not new to gray areas. Our job is to wait and go ahead. And Ravindran gave his views on what is APC and uh, how to go ahead with it. So not that you can just like that answer it. We have to discuss, we have to think a bit more and uh, um, Desigan actually spoke beautifully on the new model. In fact, more subscription models, not just on ebooks. If India is going to ask for a wider access, so subscription models with that also is going to come because a consortium model that was there yesterday is not there today. A package is not there today. Even the publisher is worried and he keeps on changing his models to suit the um, new normal like sandeep said the new normals are also changing so it is we have to wait and watch and see government putting so much of efforts so output has to be there and maybe we we will wait and in the meanwhile i'll give you one or two minutes for each of you to give your views and ravi chandran you spoke so well do you think this one nation one subscription if it comes what is your role Government yeah, is going uh, to get paid. Once they're going to pay. Even, even uh, publishers, uh, I, I want to really tell you one important thing, madam. In India, yeah. say for example, if you take uh, uh, the X publisher, they have hmm. their office uh, located in New Delhi. They will be having uh, hundreds of employees uh, uh, employed in their organization, working all over India, promoting the products and services. If one nation, one subscription is uh, emerging, all of them will be out of job. Only one oh, yes. or two percent will be uh, sufficient for them to run the show. Oh, one that's a very good point. Is, we never thought of it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It will affect the publishers. Yes, but yes, yes. You, can, you, can, you can add value on this. Prabhu. Please take over. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Prabhu, I mean, please uh, making your job difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's fair. I mean, what, what uh, Ravi said is fair. And as I said, um, a, a vendor or, 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 or a representative of a publisher uh, is a very thin, very, very fine line, you know. It's not a huge difference, right? Uh, the question is, as any of our roles go, if you don't add value, right, uh, okay. then, you know, as any of this business goes, then our existence are questionable, right? Uh, but having said that, ma'am, I mean, uh, obviously the, the, the one ONOS or whatever terminology uh, is it, kind of obviously the most ambitious. And, and, and I agree completely with you in terms of a context of in India, uh, it's a massive change. Right. Uh, some yes. of the big things, which obviously is a question for all, is also the other challenge. And don't get me wrong here, is the fact that again libraries employ a huge number of people again, doing the so-called acquisitions and collections and all that. Right. Now, what happens to that role? Right. So the impact as a stakeholders, like whether it's a library, whether it's a publisher side, or whether it's a vendor, is going to be massive. Right. If no, vendor, no, no, if not like that. Libraries won't go. Don't worry. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. No, 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 Our, don't get me wrong. Uh, orientation will change. That's yeah, all. No, I don't mean libraries will go. I'm saying the number of people involved, typically in libraries and acquisitions and all that, right? Those roles yeah. will evolve. That's what I'm trying to say. Even for us, for example, our roles will evolve too. We may not be selling subscriptions. We may be selling, uh, you know, uh, APCs. We may sell in different types. So that's not what I'm trying to say. So I'm saying there will be a lot of change. But the key under, underlying on this whole thing is one big question is, one is the, the, the budget from a preliminary point of view and, the, and yeah. long term is also the sustenance right i mean with 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 if it's one thing uh, is you yes. disturb that is right? a good point that's the key thing yeah so and what is the commitment right because if you look at anything that's been i mean unlike in the past where any of the things that happened from the government was five year plan or whatever it is now there is nothing you know everything is on annual basis so when you have scenarios like that as publishers or even anybody in the in, in the whole supply chain the biggest challenge for us is the commitment. And, and if it is very open-ended, where is the confidence coming, right? So that's where the, the biggest thing is from. Otherwise, as you said, every publisher in their own way would be 
it be would be absolutely you know uh, we'll be very keen to work because obviously it means the big market is opening you know but the other side of it is one is the key is the value factor right i mean it should not be like okay today we are spending x x amount of money and i'll give you x amount plus five percent and give for the whole country i mean any models like that will obviously will not work that is one two is sustenance right i mean what is the commitment i mean if anybody is able to commit say five years because if there's no commitment on that kind of thing, why should publishers change the model, right? Because one yeah. thing we do everything and tomorrow then that becomes a norm. And then we start building from that, that will not work. So as you said, everybody, every stakeholder in this process is important. You know, I mean, obviously as publishers, we've not been reached. Maybe the bigger publishers, they're talking, we don't know. Uh, but definitely, you know, we'll be more than happy. And uh, there, there could be so many things, as you said, we can, if they could start small, you know, involve some publishers and then spread it, see how it goes. They could work in different ways, and as you uh, said, again, it cannot be like that. Few publishers know it is total. That is what uh, one nation, one subscription is. Uh, I mean, that is ultimate, right? That is ultimate because see, the question is, where will you learn, right? What is a good number? You tell me. If you tell me today, what is a good number to pay for a publisher who will accept me? Nobody knows, right? <laughs> because, yeah, so that is that is a big challenge. So that's why I'm saying. So typically, okay, the easier. Go to the next person. Yeah, Ravi. Anything My you point. want to say? Whatever be the issues, but if it is going to come, the benefits are going to be just tremendous. Impact I mean, on the scientific me. research yes. community would be huge. Okay, yes. uh, Patak, <laughs> you are new. Patak. Yeah. Yes. So uh, concluding, I, I would like to say here that you know, all the stakeholders need to play a very cru crucial role in uh, you know, open science communication. As I acknowledge, publisher supports, but same time there is a responsibility of the librarians also. The second point I would like to say, you say, you know, like people are going, merging, you know, disappearing. I will see when publishers are disappearing, you know, the big, big publishers, they are buying the small society publishers. So that is also, you know, need. Uh, worry for us you know there should not be monopoly of certain publishers yes so if you see the ON yes. ON was one nation one subscription what is the big problem you, you see there are more than 5000 academic publishers but there are big four Six. publishers like Springer, Wiley, Elsewhere, Taylor Francis so this will likely to eat the 50 to 80 percent budget of this thing so that, and already yes. you know, there is a financial crunch so that is what I heard you know this project is getting it delayed. Is smallest you know 80 90 only 10 yes. percent all others if you see our units yes mm -hmm. so and the last one i'd like to say here you know this yeah regarding apc has uh, dr Arjuna also <coughs> mentioned that here live you need to play proactive role like we are doing here like right now i would say we have saved around thirty five thousand dollar apc you know on yes. behalf of our faculty member need not pay so i'd say here that library need to play a very proactive role and then last point i would like to say there is a you know some issue like mandalay i will say the you know mandalay was open source reference management software but you know recently few years back it was taken over by elsewhere now you see yes. mandalay and previous mandalay there are a lot of limitation has been imposed on mandalay you cannot have a you know finding your career opportunity funding of doubt option has been removed even now this uh, plugin for ms word there is a lot of change so what yes. i'm trying to say here ki, till you know it becomes open access it's you know looks things are good looks the supporting tools but when they are taken you know by this commercial publishers or yes. a commercial agency then you know these things have so i think it is not a good thing i also one of the forum i was there on elsewhere platform and i you know, openly i said this point that you know everybody is watching this what you are doing with mandalay it is not good you should not do it is a very helpful research management tool and yes so this all uh, i 100% agree point. when it was totally free i was also using it now yes. i'm just uh, i'm not using it yes that there are a lot of restrictions they have imposed yes so this uh, is all from uh, all from my side awesome uh, yeah uh, ravindran anything mm, that's all yeah. 
No, actually, uh, we are going round and round. But uh, before I complete, I'm not summarizing because everybody gave their views and the views were very good. And it's an inconclusive thing only. But I, for some time, it's going on. When I spoke to some other people, I got to know. Uh, today morning, there was a lecture by um, Madam uh, DRTC. She spoke about OO factor, Devika Mandali. She spoke about OO factor, just like impact factor for open access. So then I was thinking, why not? In fact, I asked uh, Ms. Kher or Ms. Kade now, Mahesh, what about impact factors? Why we are going to those citation uh, databases, COPAS and um, Clarivet have been uh, um, web of science all the time. Why not government? A centralized government itself take up the citation so that it is most reliable instead of some journals getting indexed this year and next year reasons being uh, slightly known to us also but uh, why not it be centralized rather than go to a private party who's exorbitantly high though we have so many such factors so there are many open questions Many things that are being controlled by bigger publishers or smaller publishers in a different way. And we have to tell the line on it is only if governments, nations, not one nation, but nations together take decisions. But they did take the European countries together, the open science idea. But we've come to another idea. So uh, it has to be a total revolution maybe have to happen. Yes, Patak, you want to say something? Yes, ma'am. Coming to your point only, I'd like to add something. Uh, one line. Yes, that sure. We are talking about this Atmanirbha Bharat. So, as you rightly yeah. mentioned, there are like you see, uh, all the institutions are buying Grammarly. All yes. A lot of money is going to, you know, uh, in yes. foreign currency. If you talk about anti plagiarism software, most of them are buying, you know, they are turning it in uh, or other. These are the like very common. Yes, tools. yes. So cannot, you know, Indian government, as you mentioned, can be given a responsibility to prime institutions. To develop such software so that much money which is going abroad can be this public money can be saved and can be utilized for other purpose so i think there also one need to see why can't we can do such we can develop such softwares and uh, every institute they can give on some responsibilities and i think that way we can also now need no to actually yesterday uh director in flipnet was here and he said we got a software for uh, plagiarism but having a tool is not enough. It has to be accepted by the major journal so that we can use it and uh, sub submit it to those journals because that is the final uh, expectation. So like you said, the government has to work on it and we have to give the inputs as the responsible uh, citizens. Maybe this panel discussion is heard by the right people and <laughs> yes Ravi you can conclude yeah I have a point but actually the World Health Organization you know only recognized now so mm. if you go on you know uh, hitting uh, the well definitely one day you will be successful IITs are there NITs are there so they can okay, develop let's continue uh, hitting the bell <laughs> <laughs> and for now, we'll close. Otherwise, my organizers will close us totally without our knowledge. No Thank you, everybody. I enjoyed the Thank panel. Thank you. Very much. Like Thank you. Thanks to you all. Thank you. Yes, I wanted to show all the panelists. I will send yesterday, he came, but uh, I will send something else to all of you. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank my you. pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. We consider we close the session with this. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. It was our honor to join. Thank you. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Yeah, Manoli, Thank thanks so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.